Hello lovelies, in this video the brilliant Dr Edwards is going to be going over control of heart rate for A-level biology. So, what I want you to do is watch this video, make careful notes, make sure you've got the names of everything and what they do correct and then when you get to the end of the video, use the link in the description down below to jump to the quiz over on my website so that you can check that you've understood everything. everyone. Okay, so this video is going to look at control of heart rate and we're going to focus on baro and chemoreceptors and how they're a type of receptor that helps the nervous system to control the heart rate. So first of all, we need a little bit of a recap of the structure of the human nervous system because we don't really go into this much detail with GCSE um, and we need to kind of know all of these names. So the main part that you will be familiar with, hopefully from GCSE, is the central nervous system, the CNS. So that's made up of the brain and the spinal cord. And then you have all of your nerves, the neurons that bundle up into nerve fibres. This is your peripheral nervous system. So that's all of the nerves that connect all of the kind of cells in your body to the brain and spinal cord. And if you remember from doing our reflex arc, obviously, the brain and the spinal cord coordinate all of your responses. So when we're talking about nervous responses and nervous control in the body, your brain and spinal cord are coordinating all of those responses. And then the nerves is what we're sending the impulses along. So we have our central nervous system and then we have our peripheral nervous system. Your peripheral nervous system is then split up into the autonomic and, and somatic nervous systems. Somatic just means body, for want of a better word. It just means kind of the body system. It controls all your conscious activities, running, jumping, talking, eating, everything you think about and choose to do. Whereas your autonomic nervous system is controlling your unconscious behaviours, your unconscious activities that are sub consciously controlled so you don't think about them they just happen on their own without you needing to worry about them so things like breathing i know you can if you need to stop and control your breathing but most of the time you breathe without thinking about it so breathing digestion all of the processes the peristalsis and the movement of food through your digestive system and the process of digestion and your heartbeat so your heart rate uh how fast your heart is beating is also included in here so in the autonomic nervous system, we branch out again into two separate systems. One is the sympathetic nervous system and one is the parasympathetic nervous system. So sympathetic is active when the body is stressed. So, for example, it is responsible for part of the fight or flight response. And so for our example, because we're looking at heart rate today, that part of the nervous system is going to be responsible for increasing heart rate. Obviously, we're talking about nervous control here, not hormonal control. So you should know, or from GCC, you may have heard about adrenaline increasing your heart rate and being part of the fight or flight response. That's a hormone and that's hormonal control. We're not talking about that here. We're talking about nervous control. But obviously, there are hormones that can have an effect on heart rate as well. Parasympathetic nervous system then does the opposite. OK, so sympathetic and then the para is the opposite. And often para means kind of none or sort of turned off like the negative side of something so if something's on then para would be off stopped prevented that type of thing so this is active when the body is at rest and calm okay so the parasympathetic nervous system works to slow things down and in this case in our example it's going to decrease heart rate Okay, so just a reminder before we go into kind of the details of how heart rate is controlled by the nervous system, a reminder that cardiac muscle is myogenic, so it means it initiates its own contraction, so it initiates its own action potentials and stimulates the muscle to contract. It doesn't need an external stimulus to start the contractions, it will do it anyway, but obviously the rate of contraction can be controlled and we're controlling it with the autonomic nervous system, so this is not about causing the heart to beat because it's doing that anyway those contractions and action potentials from the sinoatrial node and those spreading out of that signal to the av node and then the ventricles contracting is happening already and it's happening automatically we're just going to be able to control the speed or the rate of those impulses from the sa node and therefore the impulses from the av node and so therefore control the kind of rate of contraction so let's have a quick reminder about heartbeat because it would have been a while ago. 
So the action potential is initiated by the sinoatrial node or the SA node. That's in the wall of the right atrium. It's known as the pacemaker or the bunch of pacemaker cells. Obviously, if this stops working at any point, then you can have an artificial pacemaker fitted, which will control sort of the rhythm of the heartbeat, because obviously this is about it beating automatically, but also beating in a steady rhythm. And some people who have arrhythmia, so not regular rhythmic heartbeat, need the artificial pacemaker to do the job of the sinoatrial node. Then that action potential causes an impulse to travel through the walls of the atria. And you can see it obviously goes across to both atria and then it hits the AB node. So that impulse, so that action potential spreads through and causes that muscle contraction for the atria, but then also hits the AV node. And then that AV node is then an action potential is triggered there. And that wave of electrical activity travels down the perkine fibers. They're spelt in different ways, but that's how we say it travels down the fibres in the bundle of his, so that kind of bundle of nerves through the septum that then branches off and goes up and around the sides of the ventricle walls. They, the signal travels down there and then that causes that muscle around the ventricle wall muscle to contract. And it contracts from the apex upwards, squeezing the ventricles, and then that obviously pushes blood out of the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So that's how heartbeat is controlled. It's about Action potential is being triggered in a sinoatrial node that then kind of hit the AV node and then the travel down the perkine fibres in the middle of the heart in the septum and then travel up through the ventricle walls and cause muscle contraction. So we're really talking about controlling the frequency of impulses or the frequency of action potentials that are happening at the sinoatrial node. That's what the autonomic nervous system is going to control here. And then the rest of this process happens exactly as we've just said, regardless of how frequent those impulses are, it will still, heartbeat will still happen in the same way. Okay, so we're going to look at two examples of receptors that detect changes in the body that cause the heart rate to change. So baroreceptors are detecting changes in blood pressure. They're actually detecting the stretch in the walls of blood vessels. Then you've got chemoreceptors and they're detecting levels of oxygen or changes in blood pH due to carbon dioxide forming carbonic acid in blood plasma. Both types of these are found in the aorta and the carotid sinus, which is just a way of saying it's a specific part of the wall of the carotid artery, which is in your neck. So like we said, these are receptors and they're going to detect changes, either the chemical changes or the pressure of the blood which will cause these blood vessels to stretch more and that stretch in that muscle is what's detected by the baroreceptors. So both of these types of receptors can send electrical impulses along autonomic nerves to change the heart rate. They're both connected by autonomic nerves to the cardiovascular centre in the medulla oblongata which is found in the brainstem. So this is obviously a region in the brainstem that is responsible for controlling heart rate or cardiovascular rates. If you remember, we talked briefly about coordination when we talked about the central nervous system and the spinal cord. So this is part of the brain that's coordinating the response from the sensory receptors. So we've got sensory receptors that are the baroreceptors or the chemoreceptors. They are sending the information that they're detecting from the stimulus to the medulla oblongata and that's then going to coordinate the response so that's going to decide what to do about this change in stimulus and then cause an effect so it's going to send more signals down more nerves to cause the change that we want to see so in this case the medulla oblongata is able to send impulses to the sinoatrial node directly to the sinoatrial node in the heart and there's two types of nerves that it's going to use depending on whether it's going to increase or decrease the heart rate so if it uses the vagus nerve which is a parasympathetic nerve branch it's going to decrease the heart rate and then if it uses a sympathetic nerve in this case it's called the accelerans nerve we don't need to know that for now but the sympathetic nerve that's going to increase heart rate and this is because they both use different neurotransmitters. So the vagus nerve is going to use a inhibitory neurotransmitter, whereas the sympathetic nerve is going to use an excitatory neurotransmitter. We'll cover that in more detail when we look at synapses and the junction between nerves. But for now, we just need to know that we're using sympathetic for speeding up heart rate and 
vagus or parasympathetic branch for slowing it down. Okay, so let's have a look in more detail about specifically how in each example, blood pressure is going to cause changes to heart rate. So if our stimulus is that the stretch receptors or the baroreceptors have detected high blood pressure, then the impulses sent to the medulla are going to say we need to reduce the heart rate. And then the medulla is going to respond with after it's coordinated this response by sending parasympathetic nerve impulses to release noradrenaline at the sinoatrial node that's in the right atrium. And as we said, they'll be using the parasympathetic nerve or the vagus nerve to do this. And that's going to release that inhibitory neurotransmitter noradrenaline, which is going to decrease the frequency of impulses from the sinoatrial node. And then that's going to decrease the frequency of impulses going to the AVN or the atrioventricular node. And so they're going to decrease the heart rate. Try to remember talking about frequency here. So making sure we're saying the frequency of the impulses has decreased. Okay, so if we think about the opposite then, low blood pressure happens, so that's detected again by the receptors. The impulses are sent to the medulla, again this time saying to increase the heart rate, and then we have the same response, so the medulla is going to use the sympathetic nerve this time to send impulses and release acetylcholine at the sinoatrial node in the right atrium, and because it's releasing acetylcholine, that's an excitatory neurotransmitter. So it's going to be increasing the frequency of impulses, leaving the sinoatrial node. And therefore, we're going to increase the frequency of impulses going to the atrioventricular node. And therefore, we're going to increase heart rate. Why is this important? Why is it useful? Well, it's useful because it's going to prevent things like fainting. So if your blood pressure suddenly drops or your blood pressure is getting low, then you wouldn't get, be getting enough oxygen to your brain. And that's obviously a bad thing and can cause you to pass out or faint. And so in order to remedy this, we can increase our heart rate in order to try and prevent that from happening. Okay, now let's have a look at how heart rate changes can react to changes to blood oxygen or pH. So most of the time this is going to happen when you've got exercise occurring because you've got increased rates of respiration, which means we need more oxygen going to our muscles and we've got more carbon dioxide being produced that needs to be removed. So it could be building up and causing that carbonic acid to increase, which will lower the pH. Or obviously we've got low oxygen levels because a lot of it's being used up. So if that is detected by these chemoreceptors, then we're going to send impulses again to the medulla oblongata to increase the heart rate. But we'll explain why that makes sense in a second. The medulla is going to use the sympathetic nerve to send impulses and release acetylcholine again at the sinoatrial node in the right atrium. Again, we're using acetylcholine, so that's an excitatory neurotransmitter, which is why it results in the speeding up of the impulses. And again, we're saying so the sinoatrial node is going to increase the frequency of impulses that are sent to the avian and therefore we increase heart rate. So that's the kind of how it happens. That's the description of how heart rate changes in response to low oxygen or response to exercise, for example. But the why would be a separate point. So this is just what happens, not why. The why, why do we need to increase heart rate? Well, it should make sense because if we increase heart rate, we increase blood flow to the lungs, which means blood oxygen levels can increase, but also it helps to remove the excess carbon dioxide. So it's just the same reason as asking at GCSE, for example, why would heart rate increase during exercise? This is why. And this is the, the answer you would give because increased levels of respiration are required. So more oxygen is needed and more lactic acid and more carbon dioxide are building up. So we need to get rid of them. It's the same answer, that's the why. We've just got a bit more of a description now about understanding how it actually happens and how it's triggered by the nervous system. Okay, that is how heart rate is controlled. As I said, remember, there is obviously the impact of hormones, but that's not covered in this video because we're just looking at the nervous system and receptors here. There are some other receptors like stretch receptors, which can also be used, and we've talked about stretch receptors in the blood vessels, but they can also be in the muscles as well. And it works in exactly the same way. Stretching your muscles triggers 
your heart rate to increase in anticipation of exercise, which is another interesting point. This is how heart rate is controlled. It's obviously linked to an AS topic, which is obviously heart rate and how that's initiated and the cardiac cycle. So it could be a synoptic question. So it's worth revising both when you go through this topic. And this is sort of one of the more complex, nervous feedback mechanisms that we have to learn. But hopefully that was helpful. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.